Hey there! Welcome to part two of my review of the Caloric Max Air Fryer Oven. In this video, we're going to look primarily at, well, making some toast, we're going to make some cinnamon rolls, we're going to sear some steak, and then we're going to use the rotisserie feature on a roast. This is Jeff with Jeff Reviews for You. My channel is dedicated to reviewing mostly as seen on TV items. I look at some consumer gadgets, other household items. Once in a while, I do a little bit of DIY just because I think it's a lot of fun. If that interests you, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click the bell below so you're notified every time I release a video just like this one. Now, let's go hit part two of my review. Now, if you haven't seen part one, there'll be a link down in the description. Let's start the day easy. We're gonna make some toast. I've got some cinnamon raisin bread, I've got some white bread, and I have some wheat bread. Let's go see how this thing does as a toaster. All right, so now we're gonna make some toast, but the silly thing is, is I'm supposed to preheat this to toast. So let's turn it on. We're gonna put it on the oven, going over to toast. Their cook time is seven minutes. We're supposed to preheat this for 10 minutes, so let's put this to 17 minutes. And then preheat it. I'll come back when it says seven minutes left and we'll put our toast in. All right, so we finally click seven minutes. I've got six pieces of toast. We are gonna check this out. Directions say to keep it evenly spaced, put it on the toast rack. Here we go. So this is interesting. Only a minute has gone past and it looks like some of these have already toasted to where I would like them. I mean, this is after after a minute. I wouldn't put any of these in any longer. So it makes me think, why did we have to preheat it so long? Because these are, I mean, pretty good, pretty well toasted. So I wouldn't say the preheat is necessary. Let me test it without preheating it. So I'm not really sure why the directions had us preheat the oven to toast. Maybe they're thinking... We're going to mass quantity produce toast, and if the oven's hot, we can just knock them out a minute at a time. Maybe. I did try it off camera, um, just pop it in there with the oven cold, and it toasted in three or four minutes, just like a regular toaster would. I don't know if it's much more efficient, but it did work. What we're going to do next, I'm really excited about. Do you know in the infomercial, a lot of people are saying, you need an air fryer because you need to eat healthier as a society, we just need to eat healthier. And then all of a sudden the chef said, I'm going to make you a cinnamon roll with bacon in it. And I'm thinking, I love cinnamon rolls. I love bacon. I can do this healthy stuff, right? Anyway, so we're going to try that right now. The difference in this bacon is the bacon I did in part one. This bacon is center cut, so it's a little smaller or thinner than the one, the thick cut that I use. So I am going to use the three minutes as the halfway point before we roll these into the cinnamon rolls. So let's click on air fry. Go all the way to bacon. And so I'm gonna do the time is actually just three minutes because that's halfway. Let's start it. So the bacon just hit the three minute mark. I'm actually going to take this whole pan out and set it aside. I have a cutting board off to the side. It's funny because I opened up the, the package of biscuits or the cinnamon rolls and there were five. But I only cooked four pieces of bacon. So one of these are not going to get bacon. And that's okay. Alright, so all I'm going to do is just like they did in the infomercial, unroll it slightly. Take a piece of the bacon and then roll it back up which is a little more difficult than it looked on TV. But you get the hang of it after a while. All right, and then what I have is I'll put this in a greased pan, just like a round baking dish, and then I'll put it in the air fryer. A little tip, if you do end up trying these, unroll it far enough where you can get the piece of bacon in And then when you roll this back, this takes a little time. 
you actually touch the pastry back to each other. And that I thought it made a little more sense because then it connected. They recommend before doing any kind of pastry to preheat the oven for 10 minutes. Since we're going to be cooking at 350, we will preheat at that temperature. All right, so we're just about ready to cook these. I only put four in there, and like I said, this dish is grease, so that's why you see them moving around. I wanted to give them the best opportunity to cook. The directions on the package say 25 minutes at 325, except on the infomercial, they said these can be done in 14 minutes. So I'm going to try it for 14 minutes. I know that the air fryers are supposed to cook faster, so we'll see what happens um, with that. So I'm going to put bake. I'm going to put it to 350. Well, I'll do this one for... We'll try 14 minutes. If I need to go longer, I will. Um, but this is just what it said on the infomercial. So here we go. As you can see, there's four minutes left. But I'm noticing the ones in the back are cooking faster than the ones in the front. So I'm just going to spin it. All right, they have ended. We're gonna open this up, take them out. Can you see them? They look delicious. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the frosting on, or the icing, and then we'll cut them up and take a bite into one. All right, so here it is, our pastry. Let's cut it in half. That's what it looks like in there. Let's try a little bite of this. Oop, a little piece of bacon came off. Mmm, it is really good. One thing I did notice is the back or the bottom got a little darker than I like. So I may next time when I try this, put the pan up to the next level. So it's a little further away from the heating element. Overall, great job. So I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, a lot of using these air fryers, it's trial and error until you get it right. And that's how I feel with the cinnamon rolls, but they were delicious. You know what I could go for now? I could go for some nice steak. This thing is supposed to be able to make a seriously good steak. I've got two nice New York strip steaks right here, ready to cook. Inside of my Max air fryer oven, I actually have the steak pan right on top of the drip pan. That's what they recommend. They say you should heat it, heat the pan for about five minutes prior to use. That way when you set your steak on it, it actually sizzles and starts to sear. Cook time will be about 12 minutes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit start. I'm going to go right here to the air fry mode. Head down to Steakville. Right here, steak. 500 degrees is right. So if I take my five minutes that I have to heat, Add it to my 12 minutes of cook. I have 17 minutes, so I'm going to take this up to 17 minutes. And so now when this drops down, I'm going to start this, let it heat for 5 minutes. So when it drops down to 12 minutes, I'm going to put my steak in. So we've reached our 5 minute heat up time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out a little. I'm going to take my tongs and grab a steak. Let's listen to this sizzle. Put the other one on. Now we're going to put it back in for the remainder of the time and I'll flip it once when it gets down to six minutes. I will say this is the first time I've cooked something in this air fryer that I've seen actual steam or smoke come out of the unit. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it's coming out of the left side of the door right here. It's the first time I've seen that though. All right, so it just clicked to six minutes and now we are gonna flip the steaks. Let's 
All right, if you look at that, it definitely looks like it's cooking. And now we are going to let them cook for the remainder of the six minutes. All right, so we just beeped. It's over. Let's open the doors, release all that smoke. I'm going to bring the steaks out and put them on a plate and let them rest for about five minutes. Judging from what they look like, they look like they've cooked. We'll see how the inside looks in about five minutes. So we've let our steak set for five minutes and we're gonna check what they look like together. All right. So I've got my forged and fire knife. Let's see. What do you think? Think it's got a good color to it? I do. It looks delicious. Let me just cut myself a small piece. It is delicious. Perfect amount of time. If you don't mind a little bit of smoke, the steak was pretty good, and it was done in just about 12 minutes. I liked it. In a pinch, I would do that again. It's time for us to do the rotisserie feature, and something that I love to cook is a roast. And I'm going to do it on a rotisserie. So it's time to rotisserie some beef. All right, so all I have here is that honestly just a roast that's been tied. I tied it just across about three different ways. And then I put some just dry rub seasoning and stuff I use normally when I do use the smoker. I didn't have any Montreal steak seasoning, so I had to use that. I'm going to try to put the spit through there. The difficult part is none of this is pointed, so we'll see what will happen um, as I go through. Let's go. It's pretty tough to get through, actually. Oh. Came through on the side. All right, so it's kind of crooked. I just have to deal with it. Um, what I'll do now is I'll put these pieces on. Be very careful because they are very sharp. Line them up. I like about this one is, if I can ever get it on, is I like that it um, has three hooks here. There we go. All right, finally get through. So if I turn that a little and get the three hooks in, watching your fingers, get it about centered and tighten it down. Now to the other side. Make sure this one's loose before I try it. Tighten it back down. There we go. What I like about this machine is it actually has, I have it backwards, it actually has a little handle where you can put your meat in there. And take off this extra string. Let's try that out, see how this works. And now I can just load it up on into the rotisserie. All right. So we position our food in the rotisserie. I have the longer of the two sides on here because that slides into the machine. So let's see if we can bring it in there. Into that side. There it goes. And on the left side here, it just clipped down. So now we are in 
the machine completely. It looks as though we will clear the heating elements. Now what we'll do is we're actually gonna set this up um, to cook. They say in chicken mode, the rotisserie spit works automatically. Any other mode, you actually have to turn it on with this button. So honestly, I'm just gonna turn it on in chicken mode and I'm gonna set the temperature to what I want. I don't really see a custom thing here. So um, if I go to air fry, I'm gonna do chicken. I'm gonna do this for about maybe 55 minutes. I don't think it'll take that long. And our temperature is gonna be down to 350. I'm looking to get the meat to an internal temperature about 140 degrees. So now let's hit start and watch that spin. See how in chicken mode it automatically starts spinning? We'll check back in. They do say I can put the drip tray above the heating element if it starts to drip too much because that prolongs the machine and keeps it clean, but we'll see what happens. So this has been moving for about 19 minutes and what I've noticed now is it's starting to drip onto the lower crumb tray. I'm gonna do two things. One, I'm gonna get a test of the temperature of the meat. And two, I'm gonna see if I can slide a piece of tin foil in there just to catch the drip. So let's do that now. So it looks as though we're about 99 degrees, which is good. It's in that, you know, that, that range. So we got a little bit of a time left um, to cook. Remember, we're trying to get to 140. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that tray out and put some tin foil on it, and I'll bring you back when I finish that. As you can see, I just slipped some tin foil under there just to help keep some of the juices underneath the heating elements. Let it continue. So I've reached the temperature that I wanted. I'm gonna use my little handle here. Lift up on the left, pull it out. Oop, it just flipped over like that, pretty cool. Bring it down and I have some tin foil here off camera. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna wrap this up and let it rest for about 10 minutes or so and then we'll slice into it. Do you see why I wanted to put the tin foil down? That would be a hot mess to clean up. So we've let our roast rest for a while. Now let's cut into it right down the middle. What do you say? Oh, look at that. Still some pink. Looks like it's cooked well. Let's take a bite of it. It's moist, juicy, and delicious. Cleaning the machine is pretty important. So what I do primarily is I wash the windows down front and back almost immediately after I'm done um, cooking. I wait till the machine cools and I just wash the inside after every use. I also hand wash all the trays and such. I don't ever put them in the dishwasher. And honestly, I do that with most of my cookware. Um, so just so you know that. Let me show you real quick washing the doors off. I take a wet rag, it's hot, and I just clean off the doors. Shortly after I do the cook, so the grease doesn't stay on, I'll end up cleaning inside there, but I'm gonna wait till it cools down, but it's important that you really clean this thing down after each use. Well, this wraps up part two, cooking with the Max Air Fryer Oven by Caloric. I hope you enjoyed it, this was Jeff with Jeff Reviews for you. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you have a great day. I really do appreciate that you stayed around for my entire review of part two of the Max Air Fryer Oven. If you didn't see part one, I'm gonna link it right up over here and that deals with the initial setup, burning off the oils, and then some of the air fry features. I would love it if you would click on this link and by the magic of the internet, I will join you. Go ahead, click it, it's safe, I promise.